Hey everybody, welcome to the final Quick Points Podcast. I'm Pat O'Rourke. I'm the sports editor of the BU News Service. Alongside me, once again, is Alex Hirsch. And uh, we're going to talk about the Red Sox today. Obviously, the Red Sox have had a very, very active week uh, since we were last, since we did our last podcast. Actually, right after our uh, our <laughs> podcast last week. True to form. True to form. As, as we mentioned um, it, during 4 and Out last week, if you guys watch 4 and Out, uh, the, the latest episode of that, um, the Red Sox decided to make a move. It didn't decide to... Let us it. know before. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> and it seems but, that uh, what is that? Three times that after after our podcast or our four and out episode, the Red Sox have made a move uh, right afterwards. Yep. It was uh, David Price, Craig Kimbrell, and David Ortiz announcing his retirement as well um, in the next after the next year. So yeah, but the Sox did make uh, did make another move last night. Yep, uh, traded Wade Miley, which I love. Um, I wish we did the podcast last night just to <laughs> just just so we could just continue that trend. Just to, just to continue the trend. It would just be it would be so fitting. But so anyway. we traded Wade Miley, uh, starting pitcher to Seattle Mariners. Got got ourselves uh, Carson Carson Smith and yep. um, uh, I'm sorry, Rowanis Elias, uh, starting pitcher, young starting pitcher. What do you think? Well, Smith's the big Carson Smith's the big piece in yes, this. He is. Uh, He's young as well, yeah. only 27. Yep, power big. Big, big power strong arm. power power pitcher, mm-hmm. um, righty too is one of the best one of the best pitchers one of the best relievers you know against righties mm-hmm. uh, last season and uh, that that's big in this in in this division because you know how there's so much right-handed power between Josh Donaldson uh, they I know they met I think I forget I think it was. Well, Edwin Pete Abe mentioned, yeah, yeah, Pete Abe mentioned A Rod, which I'd kind of. Um, I don't know if he's going to repeat that again. Don, but Dombrowski though there. mentioned <coughs> in the, at the winter yep. meetings during his interview. Dombrowski mentioned the Toronto Blue Jays specifically yeah. because you got Encarnacion, <coughs> Donaldson, and Batista. Yeah, all back to back to back. The, the Jays are the big one. Yeah, the Jays yeah. are the big and one. You got Longoria and, down in Tampa yeah. as well. So and Smith Smith has got 92 strikeouts in 70 innings. Mm-hmm. Not to mention he's also got 13 saves last year. He has a low WHIP. Yep. And the thing that um, Farrell loves about him is the the way he throws too. Not only is he yeah. a power pitcher, which is unique to this team, you know, Koji Tazawa, um, and uh, who who else do we got um, in our bullpen? We got Kimbrel. Oh, Kimbrel. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, but uh, Carson Smith's the unique one of those guys because of the the way he pitches. Power pitcher pitches in the lower third as well. Um, his arm slot is in the lower third, so it's it's just a different style of pitching that we now have on this team, and it allows. One thing that Farrell was saying that he loves, it allows for them to have inning specialists now because, and you can say, all right, Koji, you are slotted the eighth inning. You can mentally prepare for the eighth inning for every game that we need you in. Kimbrel, you mentally prepare to be our closer ninth inning. Carson Smith, you can be the sixth inning. Tazawa, seventh inning, or vice versa. Seventh inning for Smith, um, sixth inning for Tazawa, or probably, you know, depending on matchup wise. But it allows them to mentally prepare for opponents and for the game, they don't have to have long outings by any of their relievers. None of their relievers need to go multiple innings now. Mm-hmm. Um, you've got you've got four great arms in there, as well as you've got um, potentially Joe Kelly um, in the bullpen, or potentially a long long reliever in Joe Kelly, uh, uh, Elias, uh, Stephen Wright. Yep. Um, as well as um, it allows Tommy Lane. Um, to just pitch against lefties, and which yeah. he's actually pretty good against. You well, can Elias, actually have a lefty specialist now. And then Elias could be a, th- a lefty specialist. Exactly. If, if Lane, uh, Lane, who I'm well, not 100% sold on still, but it, it, sure. Elias could be that. Elias could, could be, be that, that, that lefty specialist. You get, it allows Robbie Ross to just come in and do a, cu- a yep. couple innings here and there. We'd, we're not relying on these uh, on unproven yeah. arms, and it allows people to be slotted in almost like a rotation, just yep. like in the starting pitcher, and it creates amazing depth for this team. And like you said, the power arm is just something we really don't have on this team. Well, yeah, they they never had the power arms. Mm-hmm. That was really the big issue that needed to be addressed. They needed that more of that power in the bullpen. Even in the similar. World Series years, really. Did. Yeah. Besides, I mean, besides Papelbon as the closer, but to get to Papelbon, yeah, there well, was no Bard, power arm. Bard was a Bard well, was yeah, a power yeah, arm. I forgot about Bard. But well, <laughs> I guess it wasn't really World Series years, yeah. but two years, they, they had two some years guys ago when throw. we won Tim the World Series, was a, no, no power Tim arms was, there. Tim was a big, big power guy. And, um, oh, but yeah. two years ago under Farrell. Okay. Yeah. No, no power arms. We we have we've not had the power arms really. Yeah. Um, Farrell, it's new to, for Farrell, um, and it, it it should be interesting. So Carson Smith really is the big guy, and great. He's only twenty six years old. I mean, this <laughs> this this is phenomenal, and he's got not that we need it, but he has closer potential as well. Uh, obviously, Kimbrel is the closer, but yeah. the last big couple big closers that we've required, they all seem to get hurt and don't end up pitching for us in terms of. Uh, 
you had uh what's his name Andrew Bailey uh, came yeah, well, in and yeah. then got hurt and then they got uh Hanrahan as well he came well, in, in defense, and got hurt so in defense it, of those guys they were never really clean bills of health sure, when they came in anyway Kimbrel so. Kimbrel's a clean bill of health but you know if something goes down for him we've got two potential three potential closers on this team as well and Tazawa Koji and Kimbrel yeah. that can that can take over the mantle at least and still well, think, allows us to have a pretty deep having having Kimbrel well. in there changes everything I mean having Kimbrel changes everything I think everything. the big issue with that bullpen last year particularly towards the end of the season was that you know you didn't have that guy there in the ninth. When you have that anchor there in the ninth inning, well, hey, look look at the Yankees bullpen when the years yeah. they had all those years they had Mariano Rivera. Look at the years and he you know here when they had when they had Folky down down there in the ninth inning or Pap, yeah. you know all those years. So having having that guy in the ninth inning is is huge. And right, but that's the, what they did not have after Koji got hurt. And that's when the, the I thought is, the bullpen though, really took a nosedive after that point. Well, the big thing is though it's the depth. That's the biggest part, the depth now. Because if someone does get hurt, like Kimbrel, if yep. Kimbrel for some reason gets hurt, which it can happen, or if Koji gets hurt, they've still got the depth to be a legitimate bullpen because they've got four very good um, bullpen players. And if one goes down, you got three. If two goes down, you still got two at least to get you in the eighth and the ninth. I mean, this is a this the depth of this team is phenomenal, and Dombrowski did a is a great move. Wiley, Miley, <laughs> Wiley, <laughs> Wade Miley, really, you know, he was. Who knows what his place on this team is going to be? So well, get rid of him. his place on the medium, team. Ma- a manageable contract, and he wasn't he wasn't necessary for this team to go on for uh, to go on with. So well, his place in the team was that he had an extremely uh, tradable contract. Probably yeah. as tradable a contract as you're going to see in the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, in, he, what is he six seven million for a guy who yeah. eats innings is a good. Back end of the rotation piece, I think he's very, very valuable. Uh, I think he had a 26 start stretch last year where he was um, his, his 162 game average over the course of you know 35 starts, which he makes every year. He would throw about 220 innings, and I think his ERA was around 3.9, which is very, very good. That's a good third or fourth piece. It's not going to carry rotation, but that's a very, very good piece, and that's what Wade Miley is. And he's, I think he's a good fit in that in that Seattle rotation. That's kind of what they need. They got Felix. They got they got Iwakuma. They got uh, T1 Walker, if he can get it together, um, put, put together a full season next year, that's going to be a very good rotation. Miley's going to be the f- fourth or fifth piece in that rotation. And I, th- that, again, that, yeah, that that's going to be a very, very strong good, rotation good riddance, for Seattle. Good riddance of Wade Miley. He, he is the definition of mediocrity. Didn't want him here on this team. I, I would have taken him here, but anyway. I, w- I wouldn't take him here. I don't want him here. Um, you look at any of our World Series teams. He really, he really wouldn't have been on any of those rotations. He may have been I, a fourth, I, or good I, fourth or fifth piece. No, he 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 is by definition. If he had mediocrity, if he had a good he year, need if to he be, had a good year, there's so much more potential on our team. He does not need to be on it. I don't, I don't want Wade Miley on this team taking innings away from. Uh, young potential players like Henry Owens or Eddie Rodriguez or even Joe Kelly. Joe Kelly's still a young. Oh, yeah, but you're, ta- you're talking about guys that haven't aren't... thrown major league innings. They are. They all have thrown major league innings. It, um, <laughs> before <laughs> last year, no. But they have before this last year, year, no. But they did last year, so that's yeah. the point now. So the point is, yeah, they, they threw, should be yeah, in the, as they rookies. Be in. They threw great, great major league innings in their first. First, um, you know, I'd, year in the major I'd, leagues, and, and I'd book, rather rather the, have them playing the books than out on them Wade now. Miley. Rather have them playing than Wade Miley, and that uh, well, clearly Dombrowski let, does see, too. Let, so, like uh, I said, let let's see how let's see how Henry Owens performs now. Um, uh, see how Erod performs now, and all these guys, all these young guys perform now when the book comes out on them, and uh, you know teams have a full off season to see what they're about, see what their tendencies are, and um, you know see, see when they perform then. And, and and then then let's see. Um, this you know, team's not going to miss Wade Miley. This t- this team. Oh, they, they're not they're not going to miss Wade Miley. But I'm saying you know yeah, he would have been he I think he would have been a good piece on this team at the same I, time. He at least could have so. been. If he had it's, a good year, he'd be. If he had a, in, in a good Wade a good Miley year. year, in a good Wade Miley year, which he's capable of doing. I mean, he, he was very good in, in Arizona pitching a band box, and he was giving you know 200 innings, giving him pretty solid production for the most part, and. He's the, yeah. he's the definition of mediocrity. There's other pl- pitchers out there that we could get that are better than him. Well, what do they add in their rotation over the last few years? Who? The Red Sox? Yeah. You know, what's the, is there, is there you know, about, but after Price, I mean, do they have a great rotation right now? I'd rather have Buckles, Porcello, Colt Kelly, Eddie Rodriguez, Henry Owens, Stephen Wright. I'd rather have all of them. There's still work to do with this team, yeah. I think. A lot of people are saying that the Red Sox have been made great moves over the, over the post, uh, offseason, which they have. They've made some really, really good moves. They're they're uh, they're pointing upwards. Their arrows pointing upwards right now. They're definitely in closing in on contender status. But I don't think they're there yet. I think they're still a piece or two away. What what do you think those pieces are? I don't know. I I, I think they're I think they're right up there with the division right now. 
Okay, but what are those pieces but that the team needs now? If they could, if they could use a piece, the one thing I think of, we're going to play that game. Uh, what are the Red Sox going to do after we um, after we end the show? I'd say starting pitcher. Yeah, a uh, number you know, two. Up, upgrade that number two spot. Yeah, but like I said, I think I think they could get away with I mean, get away with having the rotation that is as it is right now with David Price at the top and the what's, guys behind him. You what's look, the point you in getting away effect. with it? You, well, you look at the you look What's at the, the effect that he had in Toronto staff last year when he came. I mean, this I think Toronto staff is very sim- was similar to what it was when before Price came. So, yeah, but what what is the point in just getting away with it when you can upgrade it? Oh, if they can upgrade, they should upgrade. So it. I'm let's, ha- let's upgrade. How do we most... upgrade this? What what do we do? Yeah, the, the person I really like is Tyson Ross. Okay. Yeah, I think he's a big righty. He's uh, you know seems like a good fit and the guy that there might be uh, might be trying to get rid of and or trying to get something for in San Diego. I think he's a good fit. He might, think... might be a good fit here. He's had some. Pretty good seasons out there in San Diego the last couple seasons. Uh, Ten wins last year, 13 wins, but the year before that at a 2-8-1. Um, pitching in 2014 was an all-star, albeit on a you know pitching in a bigger ballpark. But I think he's he's a guy that you can get some, you can get some, uh, you know, get for a couple prospects, and I think he's better than anything they got in the free agent market right now. Yeah, but don't you think that the Red Sox would have already probably tried to entice him with the Kimbrel trade? I mean, that was the talk at the trade deadline as well when we were trying to get Kimbrel that, possibly. It was Kimbrel and Ross. People were looking at Kimbrel and Ross possibly. So I, I, I like Tyson Ross. I think yeah. he's a very good pitcher. I think he'd be very good here. But I I can't see them going back to the Padres and trying to get another player out of well, him when I would know. imagine they probably would have put... You never like, know. Hey, so, I mean, there's there's some together. Red Sox connections in that, in that organization and, uh, you know... If if they're willing to if they're willing to make a deal, you know, they, they made a deal already. If they're willing to make another deal, you know, might as well, you know, it's it doesn't hurt to make the call. If you can't get a guy like Sonny Gray or Shelby Miller or Tyson Ross, I think the free agent market is the way to go, anyways. So, and there's a lot of 30, 31 year old pitchers that were dominant at one point in their career that you could give a modest contract to, probably. Prove it. A prove it contract. Prove it that you can get back this dominance. And like you said, if it doesn't work out, they can get by on the rotation that the Red Sox already have. But if it does work out, Red Sox may have themselves a new number two or number three. These names, the ones that I'm looking at are Doug Fister, not necessarily number two, but maybe mm-hmm. a number three. Uh, you got um, uh, Gallardo, y- Giovanni Gallardo, also a no- decent player, only 29 years old. Mm-hmm. The one I really like, uh, the two, uh, sorry, the two or three I really like are Josh Johnson from the Padres, free agent, Scott Casimir from the Astros, free agent, as well as Tim Lincecum. These are all pitchers that maybe maybe uh, Casimir would probably get a little bit more money since he actually had a pretty good year last yeah, year. He but would. Josh Johnson and Lincecum, those are pitchers that you could probably get for modest money right now that have the stuff to be a number two, even a number one on some teams. Uh, Lin- I mean, Lincecum clearly has the stuff to be a number one. If he could ever get back on track, which I'm not saying he's going to be back on track to become the freak again, yep. um, but maybe he can get back on track to be a legitimate number two or number three pitcher. That'd be great. And if he doesn't, well, you're right. We can get by on this team, um, and then maybe make a you know if we need to make a trade during the uh, regular season. But I I really like those guys. I think there's other ones too, Mike Pelfrey as well. Um, a name I think of is I can see is uh, Sean Markham, another guy who was who was experienced pitching yeah. in the in the ALEs, came up with Toronto. Um, he hasn't really had a good year since then. His last good year was really uh, good. Full season was 2011. He had a mm-hmm. three five four through 200 innings uh, for Milwaukee. But you know, I, I don't think he's he's probably not. You know, if you're talking about you know a two or three, it's a stretch. But you know, you look at you look at contracts like they gave to Bartolo Colon in 2008, they gave to John Smoltz in 2009. You know, it's one of those low risk, high reward deals where okay, if if, if this uh, works out. He's going to be a good pitcher for us. He's going to be a very good asset for our rotation. The other guy that I think you can get for like a John Lackey money um, is Cliff Lee. Cliff Lee, solid yeah. pitcher in his career. has been very good um, throughout his career. And uh, I, I wouldn't mind seeing Cliff Lee in here, uh, bringing in another lefty, uh, p- kind of replaces, uh, replaces uh, Miley. And um, I just, I, Cliff Lee would be a good addition, decent addition to this team that could potentially be a number two or number three. And, uh, you know, you wouldn't have to give up that much money for him. Yeah. And he's got much experience. So I, I think I think a starting pitcher is a, a way to go. I wouldn't also mind still seeing a first baseman on this team um, to at least compete. It does sound like Hanley is going to be the first baseman that we have next year because it doesn't sound like anyone's willing to trade for him. Um, but if you can somehow trade for him, there is, there's one name I like out there. He's older, but I, I wouldn't mind Justin Morneau on this team. 
Chris Davis is still a free agent. Yeah, option I think as Morneau's well. probably um, probably past his prime now. I, I don't, I don't he know is. if he's. Oh, he's one hundred percent past his yeah, prime. But he's probably you done. Could, you could sign yeah. him on this team and keep yeah, what you've got. If you've got Hanley. Risk, reward, yeah. yeah, you've got Hanley, and you can keep Travis Shaw and add Justin Morneau to that team. It's like, hey, you know, let's let's see who let's see who shines who shines through, um, and p- pit all three of them against each other. If you sign like Chris Davis on this, someone like Chris Davis on this team, you have to somehow get rid of Hanley Ramirez or get rid of Travis Shaw. You can't have all three. Yeah. Justin Morneau, no, you could probably add with the other two on the team. I'm, well. I'm not on the Chris Davis bandwagon. I'm not either. I don't um, like him. Yeah, it, um, it's not that I don't like him. I just don't think he's a good fit for Fenway. I'd rather have Hanley Ramirez hidden here right now than Chris Davis, and I'd rather have Travis Shaw hitting here. Familiar with him. But I, I, I think Shaw's, Shaw's. If there's a guy I want starting at first base right now, I want it to be Travis Shaw at this point. Sure. Um, I'd, I'd rather Travis much Shaw. definitely more than Hanley. Well, he certainly I, earned. He's certainly earned that starting spot a yeah. lot more than Hanley has. Absolutely. Hanley's only starting because he, the, the money is tied to him. Yeah. But you know, we'll see what happens with Hanley. If Hanley can you know, actually play defense, I, I have no problem with Hanley being in the uh, in the lineup. But uh, it's a I think a first base and a starting pitcher really are yep. all that's left, though. I and I think if they and it's not when I say all that's left, this is what makes them over the top. This is what makes them the the best team in baseball. And right now they're a contender in well, baseball. Right, they're right now they're a they're a playoff division. I'd, yeah, they'll go with division contender. Yeah. because I mean Toronto lost price. That's a huge loss for them. Yeah. So they're they're a contender for the division right now. Uh, if, yeah, if they had another a really good two, they're a World Series contender. Right yeah. now, they're a division contender. Right now, they're Toronto. They're they're at Toronto's level la- level last year, where you know they can win the AL East, maybe uh, maybe make a run if you know because there's not a whole lot else that's any good in the American League. But if, if they had that second piece, and this then we're talking, you know, I, I don't want to say pre 2011, but you know pre 2011 when they were, you know, the, this team was this team could win the World Series if everything goes right. This team will win the World Series. Mm-hmm. Uh, that that's what this. That's what this team would be if they added another two, uh, number two. Uh, you know what the best part about all these moves that this team has made this season? Is they haven't lost anyone except for Wade yeah, Miley. Yeah, that, well, that's, that that's the, the biggest best thing. Part. That's and the Dombrowski biggest thing. And Dombrowski was saying there's going to be a move. I mean, when before we made any of the moves, he was quoted saying he's going to make a hard move. There's going to be a move in which, like, fans are going to be like, oh. Like, it sounded like. Either Mookie was going to get moved, possibly, or Blake Swihart. It was going to be a hard move to make, well, and he nah, well, didn't. Well, he I didn't said... make a move, and that's the best part. So, uh, we we still have the future of this team is still very much intact, and he's completely added to the future of this team by bringing in someone like Kimbrel and Craig Smith as well. So, uh, Dombrowski has done a phenomenal, phenomenal job because we have the future. of This team is so bright right now. He hasn't. We haven't lost. Even our top two um, prospects as well. well I think you still we still got Mankata. Um, you still got uh, Ben Attendee yeah. as well, and you still got uh, uh, whoever. Uh, um, who's the other top prospect that we've got? Um, Devers. Devers. But yes. when when I mean, when, um, when Dabrowski said that, I didn't, I thought that I did, I never thought for a second that it was going to be you know Mookie or Zander. I thought Mookie Zander and and. Eddie, Eddie Rodriguez were all, were all off the table. It was understood with trade partners. Was if you said if you if you if you're coming and saying we want Mookie Betts, you're going to lose us. And you know when he said it was going to hurt, it was going to be it was going to be Blake Swihart. It was going to be it was going to be Manuel Margot. It was yeah, going to be Andrew Benatendi. It and was he, going to be kept them all. That's Yon the point. Mankata. That's the point. Is he's kept all of those guys. He has not made a hard move really. I, okay, well, maybe Margot, got, Margot could be. Yeah, but who cares? Yeah, that's I, I was I was I'm so sick of people saying we gave up too much for Craig Kimbrell. Oh, I, I, I know. Trust, up, trust me. I know I, you're I don't, not. Yeah. I know you're not. But the people that say that they're like we gave up part of our future. Craig, Kim, Craig Kimbrell is part of our future. We, like we have the game's best closer under wraps for multiple years. He's only 27 in one of the base, best baseball markets uh, there is. You think we're going to let him get away after he's a free agent? Most likely not. Craig Kimball is here to stay. He is 100% part of our future and hopefully our closer for the next five, six, seven years. He is part of our future. So the fact that people are thinking, oh, we got rid of Manuel Margot. Well, you know what, guys? We've got lots of other prospects that are still here and we added more to our future. That well, is what people like that aren't realizing is that you got to give up something good to get something good. And we got something that is proven, proven yeah. to be the best in the game, whereas in we gave up a prospect. For all we know, that prospect could have ended up being a dud. We don't know. I mean, he might, he might be good. He might not be. But we got a proven young closer that is the best in the game. Phenomenal trading on him uh, by Dombrowski. He's done a phenomenal job 
bringing this team out of the cellar right now. So far. And so well, far, if, that we're, we're hoping. Yeah. If David Price can't play in Boston, then that's going to that's gonna look pretty badly on his part. I don't see why he can't, though. Yeah. There's, no, there's no reason why David Price shouldn't be able to pitch here. Again, I, I think I said on the four and out, um, I read somewhere that he has the best ERA um, in a minimum of, like, I think it was like 15 starts or something like that mm-hmm. in Fenway Park since Babe Ruth. Um, yeah. so, again, I mean, that's in a he's, – he's made a lot less starts here than Clay Buckholtz has or, still, or Kurt Schilling or still, other guys. I mean, it's not yes. like we're talking five starts. We're talking at least yeah. a minimum of 15 starts. David, David Price has been phenomenal in Fenway Park, and there's, there's no reason for me to think – that he, he was phenomenal in Toronto, he was phenomenal in Detroit, he was phenomenal in Tampa. They've maintained the future and gotten tremendously better by adding veteran talent as well. And that was my number one hope going into this offseason. You added a fourth outfielder without getting rid of the three outfielders that you've got that have made for very good two months. Whether, you know, if, if one of them fails, you've got the fourth outfielder, potentially fifth outfielder, and Brock Holt as well if, if need be. Um, but... You're allowing, you're now letting Brock Holt though man the infield as well and rotate around in there. This is a very deep, very good team now. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, barring injuries, barring you know, the, a, ter- a terrible year from David Ortiz, which at some point he might drop off. It's it's possible. I mean, yeah. he hasn't shown signs of it yet, but it's certainly possible. Well, he's um, got one year left to to drop off. So. Yeah, he's got one year <laughs> left. So you know, barring that, um, hopefully maybe a resurgence from. One of either Hanley Ramirez or Pablo Sandoval. You can hope for one of them at least um, to at least do somewhat better at the bat. I mean, they can't be much worse. So. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, we'll see. This is, this should be a very good team. So I guess that's it though for uh, Quick Points Podcast. Uh, this will be the last time that Pat and I will be bringing you the Quick Points Podcast. It's been a real pleasure. And um, make sure you tune in on Friday for our last pouring out. But uh, other than that. That's it. Thanks for listening, guys. Signing off. Yeah.